Welcome to Hidden Squids Gaming. Once again, if you see my first video, not all these tips are going to work exactly the same for you because RNG is a large portion of Darkest Dungeon. Almost everything is actually RNG in the game. So that means crits can go for you and against you, other drops can happen for you, and other creatures that are harder to fight can fight you more commonly than I may run into. Enjoy. Tip 1. The Darkest Dungeon A fun fact about The Darkest Dungeon not only is it somewhat harder than other dungeons, once a character completes one, you can no longer use them in another The Darkest Dungeon runs again. There's four levels, don't be mistaken of that. I thought it was only going to be one Darkest Dungeon I took in Reynold, who you know there is an achievement to have Reynold and Dismas make it to the last Darkest Dungeon, which is the fourth one. As I said, this matters a lot if you want to do the Dismas and Reynold ending of the game. I sadly used them first, as I said before, thus ruining that chance. Also, if you have a character you'd rather use for the second or third level, make sure you don't send them in with the first level. The good news is, though, every time you do a Darkest Dungeon, those four people, or three, however many survive, they free up your roster, so if you go in with four and they all live, those four individuals no longer count towards your roster. So you can have like 32, 36, 40. In a way, it helps you, but at the same time, if you really like that individual, you can no longer use them in a future Darkest Dungeon run. Tip 2. The Quirky Things if you want an individual to become a main dungeon runner, it will be beneficial to lock in traits early and to remove traits early. Once a trait becomes locked in, it almost triples to quadruples in price it takes to get that trait off. So if something is crippling, I would get rich as they can only drink in town or they can only gamble in town. Those are annoying but not nearly as crippling as minus 5 HP or minus 2 speed or whatever have you the quirk may be. Proper management of quirks can lead to strong characters, easy boss fights, and reliable dungeon running. I recommend taking care of quirks if they pop up on your main characters right away. Tip 3. Blending together. Find a dungeon and a group of people that really mesh with your playstyle well. I know this may sound obvious, but you get three dungeon choices besides the darkest dungeon, and each come with their own unique enemies and feels and tactics to defeat the enemies in there. There's 15 classes overall, and there's a lot of combinations within those 15 classes. My personal favorite was a Vestal, Jester, Crusader, and a Leper. This was a high DPS, but also a high sustain party. The Jester would boost and stress heal, while the Vestal would mostly just heal and occasionally stun DB. The Crusader and the Leper would be my front damage. However, the weakness to this strategy was I could never hit the back lines hard. So in dungeons where the higher damage was in the back rather than stress damage, really wrecked my party. So those were the dungeons I typically didn't like to do with that lineup. I personally do very well at the Cove, and I send in this group, and I get a lot of money, and often I come out with almost no, next to no stress, so I can always send them back in. If I need to constantly work on other people's quirks or ease illnesses and diseases, I can trust this group. The major drawback is, if you're not doing this in the ultra late game, you're only using the same individuals over and over again, you're never bringing new individuals up, and you're also going to eventually tire them out, and if one of them dies, you just lost your main dungeon running. I'd recommend only really doing this in the ultra late game when you need to get characters ready for the darkest dungeon. However, finding a dungeon that meshes for you well in the early game may also help you save money. A benefit of doing this as well is you'll be able to tell which characters you like and do not like, because you only have 28 spots on that rocks roster at max, and as I said before, there's 15 characters, so you can have one of each and you can't have two of each then. So you have to begin picking which characters you like and which ones you're willing to have one of and which characters you're willing to have three of. Personally, my party was filled with a lot of lepers, crusaders, and vestals. I only had about two jesters, and other classes were dispersed throughout there. Tip 4. Trinket so good. Some trinkets you can only get one, such as ancestral trinkets. Some are very strong, so keeping track of them and taking them off of heroes before they stress heal is very important. If someone hits 100 stress, they will most likely take the next week off, along with that trinket you may have wanted for the next dungeon. The early to mid game, the trinkets are not in high stock, or at least the good ones are not. Transferring those trinkets around may be annoying and take a couple of minutes, however in the end you'll save hours worth of headaches. Depending on the dungeon, you may also want to equip a trinket that helps you with scouting. These are very beneficial in battle rooms and for quests that want you to find items or to activate items. Tip 5. The Boss Boss rooms are very easy to find when they're in a straight path, because you know they're going to be at the end. However, once you get a square where a weird branch off, you begin to panic. You're not sure which room that boss is going to sit in. The boss is always the furthest away from the starting room. As you can see here, starting at my location, we're in an account 
6 to the left and 6 to the bottom. So I have a 50% chance of getting it right. As I progress through the dungeon, I'm going to the bottom one, and I just so happened to find that necromancer, so it's a nice 50% guess. However, I narrowed it down to two rooms, I set up my campfire hoping I would scout, I did not. Though I didn't scout, I still found the room in the bottom right corner which you originally saw on the map, that is where the necromancer was. This could have not been the room, however that would have eliminated my choices and I still would have saved a lot of searching in the end. Tip 6. What's ahead? Scout heavy can save you a lot of money and a lot of time. The higher the level you get, it may be worth having a group of individuals or trinkets that allow you to be more scout heavy. This is crucial for objective missions and pretty good for battle room situations. I have cleared medium sized dungeons in about 5 minutes with effective scouting. Also I didn't have that many fights but I could avoid fights because of my effective scoutings. On the map you'll be able to tell if it's a quest item or not. This can significantly speed things up, faster resolve, easy money if it's a medium dungeon, and really no stress heals for the next week if you don't take a lot of fights. Tip 7. Not on my watch. Bring people along who can ward off ambushes at night when you use a campfire. I know each one of these costs 4 points and only allows you 8 other increasing abilities. Unless you are in the darkest dungeon where there are no nighttime ambushes, I really do recommend taking along someone who can ward off an ambush. Sometimes, a nighttime ambush can actually derail your whole entire dungeon run. Because you will have to fight in pitch blackness, you cannot increase the light which means increased crits and increased stress damage are coming your way. Unless you're using the campfire for offensive purposes and your party wasn't already hurt or like, you know, you weren't healing too much stress and health, it can really just add all that back and more. If you also have a party where that's their only sustain for stress heals and for damage heals, this could really ruin your party. Also, these abilities have some pretty nice bonuses to them other than just preventing a nighttime ambush. For example, the Crusader can minus 25 stress on himself while preventing a nighttime ambush, which is pretty nice for him. The Highwaymen can increase your chances of surprising others by 20% and decrease minus 20% from you becoming surprised. Very strong for remaining fights still left in the dungeon. If you really need a chance it and use all 12 points to boost your character's damage for a boss or something, you can go for it. Just be warned that this can get you a lot of crits and a lot of stress damage if things don't go your way. Sometimes they don't do anything The people that come or a composition you're really good against. But there's always that chance that things can go horribly wrong and you have nothing to revert afterwards. Tip 8. Forever Stunned Stunning in Darkest Dungeons is crucial. I would always recommend bringing along at least two types of stuns in different levels, which means hit like 3 and 4 and 1 and 2, they don't have to do that. You could have 1 through 3, then someone do 3 and 4, just as long as you have a range. And I say this because usually the best damage dealers or stress dealers are in the back rows, 3 and 4. Stun locking is very hard in the darkest dungeon, so even if you get one turn where you stun the largest damage dealer or stress dealer, it gives you one extra turn to either focus fire that person or get the front ones killed so you can bring that person forward for your front row people to kill it. The Plague Doctor is very good, he can hit 3 and 4 at the same time, but I also like the Vestal because she can do 1 to 3 while still obviously doing her support roles of healing. I also like to alternate, if you stun the back row, you then stun the front row, since then they don't do damage, and then you go back to the back row. Because every time, as you know in Darkest Dungeon, when someone breaks a stun, they get 50% more resistance, and usually that's enough to make your chances of stunning them again too low. I could have made this video into 10 tips, however I decided the two I was going to add are more of smaller tips, and I don't want to waste a lot of time explaining them in the detail when they're not that important. Another tip is to recruit at level 2 and level 3, or even level 1 starting off in the earlier game. The reason for this is, is they already come with their equipment upgraded and all of their skills. This will save considerable amounts of money because you won't have to buy the skills you want and you won't have to make up for 2-3 to three levels worth of equipment. That is a huge deal, and there's really no benefit taking someone from Resolve 0 and bring them up to level 3. It's just more time for them to get otter quirks and stuff like that rather than just taking them at level 3 changing out the abilities you want, and already having the equipment upgraded. As I'm sure you've read, a quick way to make easy cash and trinkets and whatnot is doing torchless runs. Often I do this with like level 0s, 1s, 2s, whatever comes in the stagecoach that I don't really want to keep for that week, because most likely they're going to hit 100 st stress, they're going to hit 150 stress, they might even die to a heart attack. You just don't care, these are people you're not going to keep, and they go in there with minimal supplies next to none, and you might come out with like, 8,000, 10,000 gold, so it's really worth it in my opinion. 
Antiquarians are also very strong for stockpiling gold and collecting trinkets that are worth a lot of money. This can also be used in a torchless run if you have an antiquarium, because this way you get a lot of money. They're also very useful support, so I would recommend having one to two rounds just in the game in general. Finally, try a repost build. It's a different spin on things, it's, but it's an excellent mixture of defense and offense. If you play in dungeons that do a lot of damage to the whole party and you have two people who can repost, that means each of those individuals can take an extra stab that turn to kill that person. Now that means the ability still gets off, however, if you can kill the thing attacking you, that's excellent. I'm going to be making more guys for the actual darkest dungeon later, an archetype of a boss, I'm not going to do every boss, because once you fight one boss, they're kind of the same, they just increase in strength and might gain another quirk, but really not too much different, and I'll also do some of the characters. Thank you, like and subscribe below.